I think that's one of the interesting things about my job is being able to take this kind of information and making it easier for audiences to digest. Hi, my name is Nicole Strayhorn. I'm the data informationist with the American Dental Association. Hello, my name is Katie Wampole. I am the Research Data Residency Librarian at Iowa State University. My name is Hamad Khan, and I am a Data Management Librarian at the University of Texas at Arlington Libraries. I serve as a data manager and research partner for the UTA community, providing data management support. I provide consultations for data management plans and support data literacy instruction. I manage UTA's institutional data repository, which is called MAVS Dataverse. I assist with data software tools and help researchers with resources and support around data collection. In a given day, I curate data sets, answer questions about our open data repository, co-teach workshops and instruction activities, among other special projects. I provide uh, data visualization expertise to multiple ADA divisions uh, for projects related to dentistry, oral health, and ADA membership. And typically, these data visualizations help guide planning and decision-making processes for um, ADA initiatives and outreach. I actually didn't start out even thinking about data librarianship at all when I was in graduate school. Um, that's something I kind of learned on the way. Um, my first job out of graduate school was is as a residency librarian, but also as part of the residency program, we do short-term rotations to other departments in the library. And one of those short-term rotations that I did was with our research data librarian. And as I started doing more data librarian type work, um, I found that I actually really liked it. So even after the rotation ended, I was able to stick on and eventually work my way up to being majority time working with research data services. I decided to start researching what kind of librarian positions were out there that I could possibly get into. And I noticed that GIS and data skills were in a high demand for a lot of these positions. And some libraries have not been able to fulfill those positions. What I find interesting is that it feels much like uh, the work of a detective. Each raw data set is a new case and you have to find the message or pattern in the raw data to form a new discovery and bring into the world, uh, you know, new knowledge that may not have been known before until you collected and analyzed that data set. One interesting aspect to my job is that I get to see a wide variety of different research projects coming from around campus. Iowa State University is a pretty heavy STEM school, um, which is not my background, so it's not my job to be the master of all for those disciplines. Um, I just have to know how to organize data, right, and file types and such. <laughs> but it's still nice to kind of see what everyone else is doing and to keep in loop with that academic circle. Some past experiences that have kind of helped prepare me uh, for doing work with data services um, was actually my start in library assessment. Um, so in library assessment, right, that's collecting, analyzing, and reporting out data specific to library world. So it's a lot of doing these things internally. But it's also very helpful when you're doing research data services because then you kind of put yourself in the shoes of researchers and as they're working with their data, you kind of know what stages they're at. And you're also familiar with working with different file types. So your typical spreadsheets, but also things like visualizations and what image formats people might be using. 
I was a National Library of Medicine Associate Fellow uh, back in 2017 where I uh, worked closely with the National Network to analyze their projects and activities data um, that helped guide um, their outreach programming. I also uh, interned for the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Transportation Library, where I created visualizations uh, for the metadata librarian, uh, where we uh, identified gaps in the collection. Going back to graduate school to pursue my PhD, where I actually had to collect data and analyze it and report it. So that formal training of a researcher and managing data has really helped me in my current position. And I really now understand where graduate students and faculty are coming from when they are collecting and analyzing data, because at one point I had to do it myself. And third would be uh, finding resources and projects where you can volunteer and learn. So I, for example, joined a data innovation lab at UNT uh, at a graduate, as a graduate student. And we worked on some exciting data collection and data analysis projects. Each really gave me a more hands-on experience. One common misconception about data services is that it's all about data management planning. And I'm here to tell you, it's not. Um, one great thing about my position is I get to focus on data visualization, where I get to use my, not only my analytical skills, but creativity. I enjoy the creative process, the research process, trying to figure out the best way to present information which is a great challenge because sometimes, you know, people want to create dashboards, which are great. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a dashboard. It could be a simple infographic. I think when people think about data services, they immediately think data management planning. There are other things to consider like data cleaning or data curation, which is a huge thing building data repositories. Um, there are so many different avenues you can go into um, if you're interested in data services. I think a common misconception about data services in libraries is that it's a must for you to have a formal background um, doing some type of data or computational degree. Um, none of my degrees are heavy in those areas but I've still found that I'm able to flourish because of course you teach yourself things along the way by doing workshops and coursework here and there, but also just networking, right? And having other people teach you. One interesting project that I've worked on is the national dashboard or national membership dashboard for the ADA where we have analyzed and visualized membership data. Some of our membership visualization is focused on membership growth or membership acquisitions, version, retention of members. And so this dashboard um, helps guide our outreach programming towards different, um, different groups and helps us figure out ways we can grow our membership. An interesting project that I'm actually currently a part of is that our research data services unit was awarded a grant award um, from the Iowa Department of Transportation, IDOT, to come in and kind of educate their researchers to their guidance document policies and how to run their data management plannings for the research. Um, so we've helped, as I said, with kind of editing their guidance documentation just to, because it's super easy, right, to have these formal things, but that doesn't mean that people know how to use them. So we've been helping them to edit it 
so that researchers can kind of know like, well, what does it mean to share something? What does it mean to license something? Um, how long should you be expected to keep it? That type of stuff. One interesting project I have worked on is the data analytics research training or what is referred to as the dark course. And this is a course that is an online self-paced development program providing a pathway for information professionals to acquire data literacy skills using common methodologies applied toward public health efforts. Uh, this project is uh, very interesting because one thing that this pandemic taught us is, is how important it is to be data literate for public health information professionals and have the knowledge, skills, and abilities to provide accurate data analysis to their community. A piece of advice uh, that I might share to those who are new to data librarianship or who didn't even know it was an option, um, it's just to try. Um, I myself didn't even know that was an option until I started working in a library, right? Um, so whether that means joining a project that is data services related, um, attending a workshop, or even just reaching out to people in the field who are working in that area to ask questions. Um, and I'm a shy person myself, so I know sometimes it can be kind of scary, right, to take the first step, but I would say that just to try. So maybe you don't uh, like numbers, but perhaps you like converting those numbers and statistics into beautiful data visualizations. Instead of analyzing quantitative data, you may be more interested in qualitative data and reporting data through word clouds. Data is the future. More and more researchers are interested in data. Um, you don't necessarily have to know how to use tools, but it would behoove you to get familiar with where can you access data? What repositories exist um, that provide data? Or what tools that are out there that can help researchers you may not necessarily need to know how to use these tools, but you might want to be able to offer suggestions. You're not going to know everything. That's the key to data services. You're not going to know, but you have to have a willingness to learn as you grow and also have a curiosity in supporting data services. Truth be told, not everyone has all the answers to all the data related problems. But if you want to work in data services, the most important skill you must possess is problem solving skills. Also, you are not alone in data services. There is a team and you get to work together with other colleagues and bounce uh, ideas and questions off of them. There's also a great network of data librarians and data community members where you can reach out uh, and get support from others. So if you want to work in data services, do not be afraid of taking uh, the chance on tasks related to data. Say yes to any new experiences or something that is going to make you uncomfortable. Had I not said yes to a lot of things in my past, I don't think I would be here today, or I think I would have struggled more had I not said yes. <laughs>